Welcome to Neo 6502 Television, where today we're introducing Neo to Morpheus. G'day, g'day, you absolute bunch of bloody legends. Loser bum back on your screen with some single board computer, single take, lo fi, 8 bit retro content uh, with a very low pixel uh, rate. And we're back on the Neo 6502, uh, the neglected uh, sing Olimex single board computer. I do need to do more content uh, on this over time. Anyway, we're back. Neo6502.com. It's got its own website. It's almost a real product. So this is independent um, from Olimex. This is done by Paul Robsons, um, who uh, we will uh, learn about more today. So uh, Robson is the person, Paul Scott Robson, is the gentleman who is writing the, the Neo 5, uh, 6502 firmware, i.e. the Morpheus operating system. And under the um, show rather than tell, well, I'll, I'll just explain very quickly how you get this on your own Neo. So first from the hardware, it's exactly the same as in my previous video, the one about let's play all the games on Apple II, um, because um, what you're going to need is a Neo, obviously. You need a USB USB hub, old crappy 2.0 is fine. You need a USB keyboard and you need a USB key, right? Or a USB stick, right? And you need the hub because you want to plug two USB devices into the Neo. So plug all of that in there together. On the um on the Neo itself, what you want to install, by the way, hey, 59 releases, right? This thing is being released at an unbelievable rate, like constant incremental improve, uh, improvements. So well done to, to Paul and the team there. So, uh, yep, you go to releases, you grab the Neo 6502.zip. Wait, that, uh, and then let's open that. And from there, it's got all the files, it's got the make files, it's got the source, it's got, the, you only need this one here, firmware underscore USB UF2. That is what you are going to flash on the device using your USB to USB cable. Again, watch my previous Neo video. It's all described. Basically, the UF2 file drives the RP2040 microcontroller and defines the hardware memory and operating system. So that's all you need. And USB is just because it's the version which then uses that USB stick plugged into the USB hub as mass storage. On your USB key, um, I just dumped the entire examples folder on my, oh, sorry, the basic part. I just dumped all of these basic files. You can um, select the ones that, that you actually um, want onto there, right? So that's it. UF2 onto the Neo, BAS files uh, or basic files onto the USB stick, and then Bob is your uncle. So with that, let's go over to Divide. And by the way, I want to emphasize here um, how fast this thing boots, right? So I'm going to click two, three, it's less than three seconds it comes on and live. This is why we like these old 8-bit single board computer. Hang on, I'm going to adjust the camera a bit. Still to this day, um, the uh, HDMI bit banged output doesn't go well with my uh, video capture device, which is why we're doing this rather fetching, pointing the camera at the screen. I will say that the colors aren't showing up very well on here. So that is a very, very nice red. That's very much magenta, uh, very nice 16-color uh, kind of stuff here. And yeah, it's the Morpheus firmware. It's kind of the, you know, Morpheus in the, in the Matrix um, and Neo. Um, it's the version which supports USB storage and it has detected a USB key. And within less than three seconds, I'm dropped into BASIC where I can just uh, run BASIC. That's what we like about these. That's what computers used to be like. Switch on, start, um, start playing. So there we are. And I can cat. Cat is the directory command. There's all my files there. So let's go and have a look at a few of those they're all going to be games uh, spoiler alert so let's start with frogger dos bass right so it's a frogger game written did you notice a load speed on that there's some other olimex 8-bit computers which seem to load a bit more slowly than this so again yeah pretty fast stuff here and it's a very smooth frogger keyboard is nice sound is not too bad i believe sound is one of the weaknesses here uh, for some reason, every time I go into the left one, it also gives me a free frog in the middle. Not sure if that's a bug or a feature. I'll take a free frog in the middle. I can honestly say that back when I was a tiny little loser bum, I spent some of my pocket money on arcade machines where there were fewer pixels than this. Okay, the sound was a bit better, but wow, right? And it's all written in basic. You can uh, you can just, uh, you know, you can just list, uh, there's all of the code. 
several thousand hundred lines, but still, it's all there. So if you don't like it, go fix it. So well done. New CLS. Next one. Uh, load. What else did we have? Um, oh, so I started almost with this one. This is the great granddaddy of them all. This was a demo game, I believe, or a, a sort of game on the Apple II, uh, which you could kind of type in. Asteroid, same thing. Key. Whoop, you're using the keyboard. Well, very fast, right? All of this is basic, right? The processor is doing the actual stuff. So again, smooth. Ah, oh, look at that font up there for the for the score and everything. So anyway, we got we got breakout. What else do we have here? Load invaders. Dot Bowser. Run. We got Space Invader. Fire key is L, by the way. Not sure why that is. Um, I have read, but I don't. I couldn't test because I don't have one. Stop the beeping. Um, that uh, this now even supports USB controllers up to three, like you know those USB game pads. We'll try that one day. Don't know if it works with these games, but again, pretty impressive. It's a fully functional Space Invaders game. Oh, it's interesting that CLS does not clear the sprites. Uh, at least not all of that. Not the last set of sprites. Uh, what was the last game I want to show? Load Galaxians. La pièce de résistance. Uh huh. Um, up and up, galaxians.baz, run, and there we go, it's a galaxians, right, L again is the fire key, the sound is not bad, okay, the animation's a bit, uh, is a bit, a bit granular, but uh, the little ships are true to type, and we got galaxians, we got galaxians on the thing, you CLS, so wow, wow, right, and on a thing that costs, remember, this costs 30 smackers, right, and, uh, it just works. USB, none of this mucking around with PS2 keyboards, no whatnot. Flash the UF2, put the stuff on the USB stick. Impressive. Last couple of things I want to show. Load nunchuck.baz. Right? And I will do a run on that and I will show conveniently we actually have a camera on the screen. I am in own I possess a, a nunchuck controller from Olimex, which comes with a little adapter which pr pr plugs into the U UEXT universal external controller and it's got the little stick if you rotate that see top left there it'll it's showing it does the buttons they change color both of them the triggers but what I didn't realize when I bought this I just threw this for another you know it's like five six credits or something I just threw it in my order just to, to get the free shipping this has actually got 3d accelerometers like a, a Wiimote uh, I don't know what we could do with it but I'm pretty sure we can do things with it so yeah we have all of those things so yay none Chuck, right? And again, every single game you will notice didn't like uh, lock up the operating system or anything like that. You press escape, you're back in basic, new CLS, and you're done. Again, I know some other 8-bit computers, some of which are manufactured by Olimex, uh, which behave slightly differently when you start pushing the hardware and then you have to reset, which, like we said, doesn't matter because your reboot times are counted in single digit, low single digit seconds. And um, last thing I'll show on the device right now is a small program called None, which is simply me on the device editing um that nunchuck program just to uh i'll run it hang on it's the same program that we just had but it only does the uh the um the the the, the, the joystick and the fire button and it throws the values out uh so those are the x and y values there on on which you see scrolling on the left hand side so well, what does that mean? That if we look at this code here, it's, I guess, initializing the IO. I think that's even reading the accelerometer, so we could probably take that out. And then it's just looping through, uh, reading the thumb control and printing those circles for it, reading the files done, printing a rectangle. So remove the rectangle, remove the prints, remove the ellipses, and you're just reading X and Y. And if we uh, look at, let's say, our Galaxians program, Right, yeah, I think that was the last one I had. Uh, list. Uh, actually, no, I, I can't see it here because I don't. I don't yet know how to stop the scrolling. So we'll go back to the actual screen over here. And if we now go into the Galaxians um, basic. By the way, uh, I'll explain something here on the left. Um, 
Galaxian, you'll find the actual re human readable text here, which you can edit as a BSC file on the GitHub. And then somewhere uh, there's a Python script, which you run, which take this BSC and turns it into the tokenized BAS, uh, a numbered BAS file, which the Neo understands. So you can edit it locally and uh, on, on your PC and then tokenize it and put that on your USB stick. So looking at the Galaxian's BSC, if I just go to... Is it draw game move ship right? I don't know exactly how it's working ish right, but um, you know somewhere here is x and y, x and y and fire, um, and so you could take that code because it's all basic, no mucking about in assembler or C. You understand what x and y is here. Grab the code from that other nunchuck program, and hey presto, nunchuck powered uh, Galaxians. Actually, I do want to um, uh, show one last. Thing. Let me just pop over back to the thing. Let's see. Sorry, camera shifted a bit. See this new load Neo. Oh, uh, is it five oh two dot buzz? Uh, is that what it is? Nope, that's not it. Hang on, I have to check what the file name was. Uh, bear with me one second. Ah, uh, should have prepared this better. Anyway, there's a rotating cube demo here. Neo cube, that's what it's called. Let's go back. Uh, load neo cube dot bands. Run this, and it's just a rotating cube. So this looks absolutely like something which you know you could do with a nunchuck, and maybe you can literally have it rotating as you move your hand. I didn't have time this weekend to try that, uh, but maybe one of the dear readers, if you manage to get it working, let me know in the comments below, and I can feature it on an upcoming video. Woof! Wow, that was impressive, huh? Not bad for a little computer with an 8-bit 6502 processor in the middle. Um, reminder of my other videos where I'm showing you how to run the Apple II straight emulator and how to actually play all of the games. Uh, link in the description below. Um, lots of information available on the Discord. I'll try to link to that. I don't know if I can. Otherwise, hit me up and we'll get you invited. Um, I think for today, that's about it. Um, remember to... Uh, well, while I'm here, remember to subscribe, like, and share. Remember to tell your friends to subscribe, like, and uh, share. Um, feel free free to hang out on the loserbum.com central links to the YouTube but also you can find me there on Mastodon Old Bytes you can find me on Blue Sky um, and in general yeah Discord YouTube comments just reach out to me always happy to hear from the community and delighted to be back with some quality 8-bit Neo content I just love this little critter anyway with all of that um, that's the Neo you're all a bunch of bloody legends I'm Loserbum and I am out of here.